In this video, I'm gonna walk you through how to install and use the navigation component that I've built on the right. It's free to download, but please remember to subscribe to my channel and consider buying me a coffee if you wanna show your support. So once we're in the app, we'll see a couple of things. You'll see the screen main screen component. I've got an extra screen here just for this demo. That won't be in your solution. If we go to the screen main and just expand that, you'll see this is where I originally built the component. I like to build them in a single screen and then move them to an actual component afterwards. You can use them either way if you want. I would recommend using the actual component because it had its own custom properties. If we go to the second screen, you'll see the actual component here. So the actual component has three custom properties. It has an image light and image dark. You can use the same one for both, but for most times the image logo isn't gonna look great on light and dark. So you can have one for each there. And then the important thing, the links collection. So the links collection here that I've put into the actual app, this is a demo of the three different types. The first type is a navigation type where you can tell it that it's a navigation type, give it an icon, set the title and then you've got an option to set use navigate to true so you can have it to navigate or not when the button is clicked if it's set to true it'll navigate to the screen that you input here the second is a header so you can put a header in and give it a title for this one i've just given it false and blank for all the other um, properties it doesn't need and the third type is url so this will open a url link i've got the icon as open and the launch URL at the bottom. See here, I've got use navigate false because we're not switching between screens. We're just launching another website. Great for launching policy documents and things outside of the app um, that we just need in our navigation. And you can build this up as much as you want. So you can add multiple navigation, you can have headers in between, you can have multiple URLs. It's entirely up to you how you build this collection. They will be um, presented in the order of the collection that you give it here or the array, apologies. So that's how you get it set up. A couple of things to note in the on start of the application, you'll see I set two global variables here. The component uses the app scope so that it can set global variables because you might have the component across multiple screens. We need to keep those global variables across the screen so that the min max remains the same, the dark mode remains the same. So min max true means it's at its full width of 250 pixels. And then false means it's at its minimum width, which I think was 60 or 80 pixels. And then I've just built my own collection here, which I've thrown into the screen main app, which is how I'd recommend you kind of build your app out with this in it. So another great thing to note is the component itself. When the buttons are clicked, it will um, update a global variable called var navigation selected to the title of the button that's pressed. Now, the good thing about this is it means if you want to set, for example, one of your navigation items to false and not have it navigate a screen, it will update that variable, which we can see being used here, bar navigation selected, which is a string. And then you can hide and show components on your screen. So you can use this to just hide and show components as well as switch in between screens. So a quick demo of how to actually implement this in your app. So I've got just a single horizontal container. I'm going to go to insert component navigation. There it is on the left hand side. Now it comes with the links collection by default. Obviously you can change and update these. We can call that um, home. You'll see it will update on the left hand side and that will go to min and max. Now you'll notice in the editor, there's a slight um, squiff on the icons here when it's minimized. That doesn't happen when it's in play mode. It's just a strange behavior in the edit mode. So because this is going to be used across different screens, I wouldn't recommend having your collection actually um, hard coded into the component itself where we set them in the app into a collection. I would actually just set this to the nav items and you'll see it just builds from them it means we can just then copy and paste this across different screens. And if we need to change the links, we just change them in the on start collection and they'll carry across. So much more reusable. But the other thing you'll notice on my component screen is I have this shadow here on the right hand side. Now that doesn't exist on the component itself and it can't. So what I do is I actually in this um, screen here, I add a vertical container. Um, we're just going to set that to full height yet. Yeah, we're going to move the component inside that vertical container. 
Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to set the um, container itself not to flexible width. I'm going to set the width of it to the component itself. So component navigation one is the one that's gone in there, dot width. Now what that means is I can have this bold shadow on the right hand side, which kind of then just gives it a bit of depth. And it means when I minimize that, the container is going to go with it and retain that shadow. So I hope that's helpful. Um, it's pretty much ready to be used in an app. So go ahead and play with it. You'll get the unmanaged solution. So if you want to change it, edit it, see how I built it, go ahead and have a look. I'll do a bit more of a deep dive on how I built some of the components just so you can get an idea of the tips and tricks and things that I do within the app. Yeah, I really hope that's helpful. Um, yeah, go ahead, share it, use it. Uh, let me know how you go.